Hello everyone, welcome to Box Office Receipts. I'm your host, Tyler Callahan, and got a decent amount of news. We got more box office numbers. We have an update on Paramount. A new Hunger Games movie is now in development, streaming updates, and more. Let's start with the domestic top five. Climbing up to first place was the Garfield movie, earning $14 million for a total of $51.5 million. In second place was Furiosa with $10.7 million for a total of $49.7 million. Uh, right behind it in third place was If with another $10.5 million for a total of $80.1 million. Fourth place was Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes with $8.9 million for a total of $140.1 million. And in fifth place was The Fall Guy with $4.1 million for a total of $80.1 two million dollars so this was a quiet weekend at the box office as we wait for more summer releases to come out garfield had a great hold of uh, dropping only 42 percent compared to its opening weekend and furiosa didn't do too bad dropping 59 percent the real issue here is it had a low opening weekend internationally furiosa earned another 21 million for a worldwide total of 114.4 million worldwide the garfield movie made 27.1 million for a worldwide total now of 152.2 million. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes earned 15.2 million for a total of 337.2 million worldwide. If is now at 138 million, and The Fall Guy is now at 158 million worldwide. For news in Hollywood, let's start with Paramount. Again, really at this point, the entire saga could be a movie. First, we got Paramount hosting their annual shareholders meeting and we heard from the office of the CEO, with all three of them in attendance. As for what their plans are, well, most of it involves cost cutting. They are aiming to do 500 million in cost cutting, and yes, this will sadly include more layoffs. As for when those will happen, as well as talk about other details of their cost cutting plans, they will talk about those later in the summer at the company's Q2 earnings call. Besides that, for Paramount Plus, they are exploring options on a possible joint venture. With another company we've talked about that on the podcast months ago when reports came out that there were early talks about paramount plus and peacock merging in some way though so far nothing has come from it so yeah they had no amazing grand plan to save or transform the company uh, but to be fair they are kind of just there to keep the company going until a buyer is found as long as they can do that they're doing their job as for the latest skydance offer the special board at paramount for dealing with offers have approved it and sent it to sherry redstone to review if she signs off on it, that will be it, and we will be moving forward with Skydance as the winner. In exclusive from Deadline, they're reporting that Scott Derrickson and C. Robert Cargill have signed a first-look deal with Sony Pictures to produce films for Screen Gems. So if you don't recognize their names, they make horror films. Uh, most recently, they teamed up to make the Black Phone for Bloomhouse and Universal. Neon announced that Anora will have a limited release in theaters in the U.S. starting on October 18th. The film recently won the Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival. Palme d'Or winners in Neon, uh, name a more iconic duo, please. Uh, seriously, this is the fifth film that Neon has had that's won the big award there. Uh, some others include Anatomy of a Fall, Triangle of Sadness, and, of course, their biggest one, Parasite. There are a few new movies in development, so let's go over them. The Angry Birds Movie 3 will be moving forward with both Jason Sudeikis and Josh Gad coming back to reprise their roles. Uh, we already knew this one was in the works, but there is an update. For the next MonsterVerse film, aka Godzilla and Kong 3, whatever that will be called, Grant Spator has signed on to direct it for Legendary. He previously directed a film called I Am Mother, which is available to watch on Netflix. An exclusive from Deadline, they're reporting that Yan Sang-ho has signed on to direct an action horror film called 35th Street for TriStar Pictures. This will be the director's first English language film. And if you're not sure who he is, he directed the hit Korean horror film Train to Busan. Lionsgate must have prayed hard for this to happen as they are working on a new Hunger Games film. This comes as the author of the series, Suzanne Collins, announced she is writing a new novel that will come out next March called Sunrise on the Reaping. So obviously, with a new novel in the works, that means Liongate can work with Collins on a film adaptation, and they're moving fast. Uh, besides announcing that the film is in development, 
they announced that it's set to come out November 2026. And Deadline reports that Francis Lawrence is in talks to come back to direct. In distribution updates, Lionsgate bought the rights to small things like these, starring Killian Murphy. The studio now has the rights for it in North America, the UK, and Ireland. So far, no release date has been set yet, though I would think it would get a release sometime in the fall. And in an exclusive from Deadline, they are reporting that Skydance bought a film package, spending a reported 80 to 85 million. They bought Way of the Warrior Kid, starring Chris Pratt. While it is a lot of cash, it is for the global rights to the film, and Deadline also mentions that as of now, the plan is that Skydance will produce it for Apple, so it might be going straight to Apple TV+, Plus, or also get a theatrical release as well. Not clear yet. Also at Skydance, they have hired Don Hall to create and produce an original animated film for Skydance Animation. Hall previously has worked on a lot of Disney films over the past decade. He was the director for Raya and the Last Dragon and Strange Worlds, and he was also a co-director for Big Hero 6. Sadly, there were a few deaths this week. Tom Bower died at the age of 86. He was an actor that appeared in TV shows and films, including Die Hard 2, Miami Vice, Law & Order, and NYPD Blue, among others. Jeanette Charles died at the age of 96. She was an actress who appeared in a few films, including The Naked Gun, Austin Powers in Goldmember, and National Lampoon's European Vacation. Logan Stan Garner died at the age of 83. He was most known as a train coordinator for film and TV sets, and also appeared in some shows portraying a train conductor. Janice Page has died at the age of 101. She appeared in numerous films and TV shows, including It's Always Jan, Wagon Train, and Please Don't Eat the Daisies, among others. And Terry Hayden has died at the age of 75 after a long illness. She was a talent agent who worked in Ireland and helped launch a few careers, including Brendan Gleeson's and Gabriel Bryan, among others. Thoughts and prayers go out to their families during this time, and may they rest in peace. Let's go over some casting updates with Deadline Breaking. All of these stories. First, Jessica Henwick, Topher Grace, and Zach Woods have joined Huntington. The film Over at Studio Canal stars Glenn Powell, Margaret Qualley, and Ed Harris, with it being directed by John Patton Ford. Also, along with this, it was reported that production has started. Kate McKinnon and Andy Samberg have joined the cast of The Roses. The film already stars Olivia Coleman and Benedict Cumberbatch. Production on that film is set to begin this month. Over at 20th Century Studios, Ellie Fanning is in talks to star in the upcoming Predator movie, Badlands, which will be directed by Dan Trattenberg. And it looks like the Watch Dogs film adaptation is indeed moving forward at New Regency. Based on the video game series from Ubisoft, both Tom Bluth and Sophie Wilde are set to star in it. Curious how that's going to turn out. We got a few new trailers this week from Sony. We got our first look at Venom The Last Dance, starring Tom Hardy. It's set to come out October 25th. 20th Century Studios released a new trailer for Alien Romulus, and it still looks like it'll be a good horror movie. It comes out August 16th. And from Lionsgate, they released a trailer for The Killer's Game, an action movie starring Dave Bautista. It comes out September 13th. For VOD Premium, we start off with Warner Brothers Discovery, and more specifically, Max. And sadly, they have gone ahead and canceled Tokyo Vice after two seasons. While not surprising, I do appreciate that the show was able to end with a satisfying conclusion. And if you haven't watched it yet, please do. It's a fantastic show. In exclusive from Variety, Warner Brothers Discovery have gotten the rights that a French Open for the United States. Currently, they only have the rights to it in Europe with airing on Eurosport. Now with this new 10-year deal, they will continue to have the rights in Europe and starting next year, the US as well. Again, the company continues to grow their sports portfolio as it looks like they will be losing the NBA next year. The latest on that is apparently they would like to talk to the league about making a fourth package of games that they can pay for. That doesn't seem likely. And if it holds, the three packages will be split up to Disney for ESPN, Comcast for NBC and Peacock, and then Amazon for Prime video. Warner Brothers Discovery is also raising the price of the ad-free tiers of Max in the United States. Beginning on June 4th per month, the ad-free plan will cost $1 more to $16.99, and the ultimate tier will go up $1 to $20.99 per month. For the yearly version of those plans, the ad-free tier will go up from $149.99 to $169.99, and the ultimate tier will go up $10, now costing $209 dollars and 99 cents annually 
Fifth season is developing a TV series of Hostel. This was a horror franchise from Eli Roth that was super, super gory. Roth is coming back for this as he is set to direct and write, and so far they are not messing around as Paul Giamatti have signed on to star in it. Curious to see who is going to buy it. Apple TV Plus have renewed Palm Royale for a second season, and for what is new to watch, well, Presumed Innocent premiered on the service. The drama stars Jake Gyllenhaal and has been getting good reviews, with it at a 78% on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm definitely looking forward to watching it. Over at Disney Plus, the latest Star Wars show, The Acolyte, premiered, and at least right now has people interested. Disney announced that the first episode got 11.1 million views in its first five days. It is a few million less than what Ahsoka did last year, but to be fair, Ahsoka is a popular, existing character. The Acolyte also holds the record for the biggest series premiere on Disney Plus for the year so far. So like I said, there is interest. The question now is will people stay interested? Paramount Plus have gone ahead and renewed Criminal Minds Evolution for a third season, which will start production later in the year. This comes right as the second season is about to premiere on the streamer. Over in the UK, CEO of Sky Group Dana Strong spoke at a media conference where she said the customers will still have access to content from Warner Brothers Discovery on Sky's platform in every scenario. This comes as talks continue between Sky and Warner Brothers Discovery about their deal, which is set to end next year. And this is important because the UK is a big market where Max is not available, and this has been part of the reason why. Could they launch it right now? Yeah, of course, absolutely. But good luck trying to sell it when you can't offer any of your HBO shows. Personally, I think what will happen is that when a new deal is made, Warner Brothers Discovery and Sky will have some kind of deal for Max. Like... Max will be available as an add-on for Sky customers at a discounted rate, and if you don't have it, well then you can subscribe to Max standalone at a regular price. That's my guess anyway, this way they can launch Max as a full service with HBO content, and for Sky customers you get a discount on signing up for Max and continuing to get access uh, to HBO shows. I do wonder though, this is getting a little bit in the weeds, I believe was Sky Atlantic is a channel over on Sky for, like, their satellite service. As far as I know, Sky Atlantic is basically just, like, a HBO channel to some degree. So, like, if they... I wonder what happens to that channel after the New Deal. But anyway, that's, again, super detail in the weeds there. Let's move on. Switching over to the other side of Comcast, let's go from Sky to Peacock, where it was announced that Lucky Man will be available to stream starting June 14th, while Kung Fu Panda 4 will be available starting June 21st. And a new thriller series is in development for the streamer called All Her Fault. It is based on a novel of the same name that was written by Andrea Mara and will star Sarah Snook in the lead role. She was great in Succession, so I'm probably going to give it a watch. In exclusive from Variety, it looks like a reboot of White Collar is in development. During an interview, White Collar creator Jeff Easton mentioned that he's already writing a script for the reboot, and Matt Bomer, Tim Decay, and... Tiffany Thiessen are involved in coming back. It was also mentioned that it would honor Willie Garson, who played Mozzie, in the show. Uh, However, he did die back in 2021. If the reboot is greenlit and moves forward, it's not clear where it would end up. Uh, The reason why is this was a show on the USA Network over at Comcast, right? Like Suits. But this was produced by Fox Television Studios. So that would mean technically Disney would own the reboot and could go to Hulu. Right. But again, that's the very early stages. Uh, they can make a deal with Comcast where it goes back to USA or maybe like Suits LA is going to NBC. Maybe this white collar reboot will go to NBC as well. So there will be NBC and Peacock. Who knows yet? Taking a look at Netflix Friday. Also got the exclusive on this as well. As a new series has come out of nowhere, basically. Uh, they broke the news that Like a Dragon video game series is getting a TV adaptation. And not only that, but it's coming out this fall. Based on the description, it looks like it'll be adapting the first game, and the series will have six episodes coming out in two batches. The first half will be available on October 25th, and the second half on November 1st. Tekuchi Roma has been cast in the lead role as Kiru Kazuma. This really was kept under the wraps, really, uh, especially with it coming out in a few months, so hopefully it's good. We got the Nielsen Top 10 for the week of May 6th to the 12th. On the overall Top 10 chart, the roast of Tom Brady came in first with 1.6 billion minutes. Second place was Grey's Anatomy with 1.1 billion minutes. And Bluey came in third with 1 billion minutes viewed. Finally, we head over to Netflix where The Hollywood Reporter broke the news that Josh Brolin has signed on to the upcoming Knives Out sequel, Wake Up Dead Man. I'm loving this cast so far. 
Netflix is getting more SpongeBob content, with it being announced that Plankton is getting his own movie, called Plankton the Movie. The animated film is directed by Dave Needham, and will come out sometime next year. The streamer this week got hit with a lawsuit over their big limited series, Baby Reindeer. Fiona Harvey has come out and said that the stalker character Martha in the show is based on her and has filed a lawsuit in California alleging defamation, negligence, and violation of her right of publicity and intentional infliction of emotional distress. One thing that is interesting here is that Richard Gadd, the creator of the show, is not listed in the lawsuit. You would think, since this is his story and created the show based on it, that he should be listed right next to Netflix on the lawsuit. But he's not. As for Netflix's response, this is what they had to say, quote, We intend to defend this matter vigorously and to stand by Richard Gadd's right to tell his story, end quote. Personally, I don't think this lawsuit will go anywhere, but there is one thing Netflix might have a problem with in trying to get the lawsuit thrown out. The start of the show says that it is a true story, not based on a true story. That could be a problem because of some events as this could be a problem because of some events as shown in the show are confirmed to have not happened at all or they're really exaggerated. That could be a problem for the streamer. And that's why a lot of a lot of shows and films do based on a true story so they can get away with it legally, right? Based on a true story, not saying it is a true story. But again, that that issue might come up if it ever actually gets to court, which is kind of iffy. We got the Netflix Top 10 for the week of May 27th to June 2nd. For English films, Atlas stayed in first place with 31.6 million views. Ice Age Collision Course came in second place with 9 million views. And Ice Age Dawn of the Dinosaurs came in third place with 8.1 million views. For English TV shows, the third season of Bridgerton stayed in first place with 11.6 million views. Dancing for the Devil, the 7 million TikTok cult, came in second place with 8.8 million views. And in third place was Eric, which debuted 6.8 million views. Also, Damsel, the action fantasy movie starring Millie Bobby Brown, has broken into Netflix's top 10 most popular films of all time. It is now in eighth place with 137.2 million views. With this, the first extraction film was kicked out of the top 10, now in 11th place. And finally, Deadline broke the news that the Peaky Blinders film is a go over at Netflix. They will be teaming up with BBC Film to make the film, and Killian Murphy is coming back to reprise his role of Thomas Shelby. The script was written by Peaky Blinders creator Stephen Knight, and will be directed by Tom Harper. Production is set to begin later this year. And while not directly related to Netflix, it was also announced this week that Banjay UK have bought Karen Manderbatch Productions Limited. This is noticeable because they own the rights to Peaky Blinders, so when all the papers are signed, Banjay will be the new owners of the series. And as if this episode of Box Office for Seats, if you want to follow me on Threads X or Instagram, links to those are in the show notes. Thank you for listening, and see you next time.